Marcus, it's your birthday. March 1972 at the Robinson Memorial Hospital in Valley Money, County Antrim to his parents, Joyce and Norman. 
He was a very shy boy and clung to his mummy, so starting school was a big deal. He first attended the Slogan Primary School before going on to Ballymoney High School. Yes, that's right. Um, I was a very shy boy. Very shy right up until the age of 18, in fact, when I started my first job, would you believe? Um, but way back then, uh, I can remember my first day at school. I can remember standing outside and really not wanting to go in. And when I said I clung to my mummy, I really did. I was literally holding on to her skirt, not wanting to let go. Not wanting to let go. Um, and I think certainly um, my teacher, Mrs. Calderwood, was almost like a surrogate mother to me. Um, but I didn't enjoy school. I didn't enjoy primary school at all. And in fact, at one stage, um, the headmaster said that I'd missed one third of my entire school life. I think it's because I was just so shy and so scared of being out on my own. Unlike now. Well, you know, it takes courage. And it's, Look how far you've come now. It's taken several decades to get this far, as we can see. We wrote a short poem for Marcus. We've known Marcus for many a year. He is usually mostly full of good cheer and we agree he's an absolute dear and he and Paul love their beer. That's the end of the rhyme. Have a bloody marvellous good time and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Marcus. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip, hooray! Much love. Bye. Bye. Marcus, a penguin flew all the way from Antarctica to tell me that it was your birthday. Now, that's a load of rubbish, of course, because, as we all know, penguins can't fly. However... Somebody did tell me. So I'm going to wish you a happy... F I can't believe you're 50, Marcus. I really can't. Happy birthday, Marcus. 50. Outbreak. I'm only 35. Bye. As a young boy, Marcus would dress up. One of his favourites was Margaret Thatcher. I'm not quite sure what to say about that. Neither am I. But I was an equal opportunities offender. And by that I mean I also dressed up as Michael Foote, who was the leader of the Labour Party at the time Margaret Thatcher was the Conservative Prime Minister. There are photographs of me. I'm not sure if they'll be available for this show of me dressed up in my mother's uh, hat, blouse, skirt and stockings. And I'm sure Margaret Thatcher never did this, although you could never be sure, I suppose. But there's a picture of me sprawled out with my legs wide open in the garden, dressed in full Maggie regalia. And in fact, in later years, you'll probably see pictures of me um, throughout the show um, when I had hair. And I actually had a Margaret Thatcher bouffant. Oh, wow. Which is probably why I don't have any hair now, because it was so heavy that it just ripped the roots out. One thing I think I will point out is that you did have a fascination with the uh, politics even from a young age. Yes. Let's so. just leave it at that. Hello, Marcus. Many happy returns and greetings on this fantastic birthday. Do you know, I didn't realise till I stopped to think about it that it's your big 5-0. How amazing. Uh, congratulations. And, you know, you've a long, long way to go to catch me up because, of course, last year I had my big 8-0. So all the very best. Have a super day. Greetings from me here in Largs and also from Gulliver, who's beside me, and he's hoping you'll soon be on your travels again. Bye-bye. Hey, Marcus. Happy birthday. Congratulations on reaching the five decade old club. Welcome to it. It's so much fun. Cheers, mate. Marcus knew he was gay from a very early age. He says, I didn't know what it was, but I always knew I was different from the other boys. <laughs> Someone's birthday! This is Maximus! And I'm Maybe Maximus! 
and I am Cassius, and we all just wanted to wish Marcus a happy birthday! <laughs> Growing up in Northern Ireland at the height of the Troubles brought its own stresses, although belly money was somewhat sheltered from the worst of the violence. Well, that's right. Belly money, I suppose, was the furthest you could almost be from the border. And um, border areas and Belfast and Derry, Stroke Londonderry, were the, the areas that suffered the most. Now, I'm not saying that nothing ever happened in belly money because... I believe um, just a few weeks before I was born in 1972, there was a bomb in Main Street or High Street, uh, but certainly in Ballymoney Town Centre, and um, someone died in, in that bomb. Um, and there were other incidents as well, kneecappings and sectarian violence. I suppose we would have called it almost like low-level violence. Not the sort of stuff that got reported on the news and the rest of the, the UK and around the world. Um, so I guess in Bally Money we were pretty much sheltered from the troubles and also from the whole political um, spectrum. Even though uh, a certain Ian Paisley was the MP for North Antrim. His son still is MP for that area now. <laughs> When Marcus turned 18, he not only started his first job as a reporter on the Coleraine Chronicle, he also started making gay friends, mostly in Belfast. But he also had a special friend in Bally Money. When Marcus was 22, his mom died and he was forced to live on his own for the first time. After a while, he decided Northern Ireland was no longer for him, and he moved to England in 1996, aged 24. Yes, I remember it all very well. Um, after my mother died, I was 22 at that stage, um, I was left home alone um, because I'd lived with my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother died, that was my mother's mother, died 10 weeks before my mother. So my entire world really crashed down and that shy boy who was still there to an extent, even though I'd been working for four years, but he disappeared overnight because I had to live on my own. And I was still at that time, and in actual fact, at, yes, at that time I was when my mother died, I was still working for the Korean Chronicle, but on the night, the night before she died, I received a phone call from the proprietor of another newspaper, and I ended up getting the job as editor. Mm. Yeah, editor, but of the Lauren Gazette, which oh, was wow. a new newspaper. I was the, the youngest newspaper editor in Northern Ireland at the age of 22. And um, I could have and probably should have moved to Lauren. Uh, if you know Northern Ireland, it's not a big place, but Bally Money to Lauren is a good 40 miles, I guess. and. I was driving every day, and it wasn't the best of roads, some of it, some country roads. And uh, But I decided that I had to, to stay in Bally Money because my friends were there. And also, just a sort of a little anecdote, um, I'd, I'd made friends with the owner of a, of a cafe because, as you probably know from the show, I'm not very good at cooking. <laughs> and um, there was a guy called Mark Harold who owned Harold's Cafe. Oh, wow. Yes, in, in Bally Money. And um, after my, my mother passed away, I went in there quite a lot. In fact, 
sometimes I was in three times a day for, for breakfast, lunch and, and dinner. And um, even when I was working in Larne, I would have breakfast there. And I had to be in Larne for about eight o'clock in the morning. And Harold's opened at around seven or thereabouts. But Mark would usually get there a bit before that. And I would be there on the doorstep the moment. No, it, no. Oh, well, the moment. I yeah. Know. <laughs> and the thing was, it got earlier and earlier and earlier. Because of you? Because of me. Oh, wow. And I was there like almost when he was just getting in. And I would be there. He would get the toast on. And it would be bacon and sausages and, yeah. no Eggs and stuff. It, it was a complete Ulster fry <clears throat> every day. I had that. It, it set me up for the day. Sounds um, delicious. It was delicious, but it uh, turned me into a real porker uh, at the time. I mean, I'm overweight as it is now. Um, weight has always been an issue throughout the years. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really, really was a great big fat pig at that time. Marcus has lived all over England, from High Wycombe to Salford and Bradford to Oxfordshire. But most of his time has been in London. Yes, that's right. And in fact, the first place in London I lived was Kew Gardens. And I've been all over the place. I've been in Balham, I've been in Kennington, I've been in Chiswick. And since Paul's been here, we've been in Uxbridge twice now, but we've lived all over the place. I mean, I could list various other places um, that I was. We were in, in Nottingham. I mean, I've, I've lost count. Uh, Salford, Stroke, Manchester. Um, where else? Abingdon. Yes, Abingdon in Oxfordshire. Um, so it's been all over the place, yeah. I knew something was up at home, but as a naive teenager, I didn't suspect the piece of news we were about to receive. The phone rang on Saturday morning while my dad was busy trying to sort out lunch for us. Our mother was already in hospital as Marcus was due to be born any day. Dad picked up the phone and I saw him nervously write down. He was right of course as Marcus brought a lot of sunshine into our lives. Marcus and I have always been very close. In fact, I think we are like soulmates, even though we have spent most of our lives apart. I can remember one day at home in Valley Money. I was packing to go back to university. I looked around and Marcus was inside my case with his toys. Even after I married and had my daughters, we visited home every summer and Marcus was always very kind and loving towards his nieces. We enjoyed many happy outings together. Over the years, we have always tried to meet up whenever possible. Marcus sometimes came to stay with us in Spain and we have shared many good moments. When he met and married Paul, I welcomed him into our family and we have since enjoyed meeting up in London or Spain or traveling together.
Marcus was 27, he visited New York for the first time with a friend. He loved it so much, he decided to return again on his own. But he wanted to have a contact there, so he answered an ad in a gay magazine called XY from someone looking for a few good men. It turned out to be Paul, Jess, that's me, and the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, what a lovely tale. Or herstory. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Uncle Marcus. Happy birthday to you. Hi, Marcus. Happy 50th birthday. We wish so much that we could be there with you now to celebrate, but given the circumstances, we can't. So we decided to give you the next best thing, a slideshow. Happy 50th, Marcus. You're the big 5-0 this year, half a century old. Um, wishing you lots of luck, happiness, and health, and a great year this year. Um, hopefully, we can have you guys come over in the near future when this whole COVID thing dies down a little bit. We really enjoyed having you guys stay over, uh, like a couple of years ago when you did come by and having drinks with us, food. Um, again, happy 50th. You can just, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the walk down memory lane. We wish you another half a century of fine dining with Paul, travels, continued success with your YouTube channel, good health, and loads of happiness. We miss you and we hope to see you soon. Happy 50th birthday, Marcus. Happy 50th, Marcus. We hope to see you soon. Happy birthday, happy, Marcus. Happy, uh, birthday. happy birthday. Yeah, we know you're turning 50. And we haven't seen we, you in a while. Yeah. We, we hope uh, you, got, you guys have success with your YouTube channel. And hope you guys have a... Hope you have a good year and a good 50th birthday. Well, we remember great times we had when we were together. And we're planning to make more by doing this video. Yeah, so happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Marcus has always wanted to be a TV presenter, and by doing this YouTube show, he has realized his dream. Thanks for watching our show today. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Yes, do. Please subscribe. I mean, really, please subscribe. But the day job still pays the bills, and as we celebrate Marcus turning 50 today, we also say congratulations as he starts a new job. Oh, wow. Yes, well, when this goes out on my birthday, which is the 18th of March, today, hopefully, as you're watching it, I will be starting a new job 
on Monday and it couldn't really come at a better time turning this age um, and getting a, a job you know on a publication which I have the greatest respect for so you all know what it is I'm looking forward to it very much and I'm hoping that it's going to be another great page another great chapter in my history <laughs> so thank you Paul for celebrating my birthday today. Oh, is there more? Oh, I think we're missing something, aren't we? Well, let's just get set up and we'll see you in a sec. Well, something's going on. I'm not quite sure what it is. Oh, glasses have appeared. Look at this. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, well, I think that the best way to celebrate you turning the big 5-0 is for a wee dram of Bushmills Whiskey, which is right near your hometown, is it not? It is, just a few miles away from, from Ballet Money. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, as we've said in another episode, um, we visited a couple of times. But yes, I think it's the perfect way to celebrate my 50th birthday. Happy birthday to you once more. Thank you very much. Here's to the next 50. And cheers. And thank you very much indeed for watching. Cheers, everyone. And we'll see cheers. you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh yes. Mm. Who said you can't drink in the morning? Huh? Oh wow. Another? <laughs> no, it's too early. <laughs> Done.